Red Sox pitcher Chris Sale suffered a pretty bad left pinky injury earlier today after taking a comeback hit off of that left hand. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and in this video I'm gonna walk you through what happened here with Chris Sale and this injury to what we call his proximal fifth phalanx or the proximal finger bone on his fifth finger. This was the play where it occurred, just an absolutely unlucky, unfortunate thing. Ball comes back towards Sale at the mound and he just reflexively brings that left hand across to protect his body. In that split second, you don't really have enough time to think other than your reflex are saying just protect you. And so you bring both your arms in close to your body to protect from getting hit with that ball. And unfortunately the ball strikes him on that left hand. Now it's hard to say exactly if it jammed the pinky, meaning going directly in from the side or if the ball just struck that proximal phalangeal bone. But either way, this pitch coming back to the mound is when that injury occurred. As Sale is walking off the mound, we can see this clear deformity in sort of the contour there of that proximal, again, closer to the body, bone of the pinky, suggesting likely underlying fracture. When we describe anatomic location in the body, we say distal to mean anything that's further away from the body. So the fingernails are distal compared to the wrist is proximal. So proximal is going to be anything that's closer to the body. So when we go through all the different finger bones, of course, we've got a bone here, we have a bone here, and we have one here. So the second through the fifth finger all have three phalangeal bones. There's three individual bones in here separated by those knuckles that make up the joint. Further down in the hand is going to be where we find the metacarpals. Those are kind of the bones within the palm. And so when we get over to that fifth finger that's injured, this is going to be the distal phalanx, this is going to be the middle phalanx, and then this one where we see that clear deformity is going to be the proximal phalanx. Part of me wondered if this could be a dislocation of this MCP joint right here just because of the way that it almost looks like that proximal phalanx is what we call displaced volar, meaning forward towards the palm. But the fact that the skin kind of comes back upwards and you still see a little bit of contour of that knuckle makes me think this is just a fracture of that bone. And again, in this view, we're seeing that same thing. Of course, the second, third, fourth fingers all look nice, normal contour. We get out here to the fifth, we see that clear kind of deformity irregularity there suggesting an underlying fracture. With our biodigital anatomy tool here, let's look at all these different bones that I was alluding to. So this is, of course, is going to be a left hand. We're just sort of flipped around a little bit here. But if we look at the outside of that left hand, again, these are going to be the bones through the palm. These are going to be those metacarpals. This area right here, that metacarpal phalangeal joint, that's the knuckles going across the back of our hand. And then as we get further out again, one, two, three bones within each of those fingers. So the bone specifically that we're worried about here with sale is going to be this guy right here, that proximal phalanx of that fifth finger. There's four primary factors that influence if you can treat these finger fractures without surgery or if they need surgery. Those are going to be how much angulation there is, meaning bend between the two ends of the fracture, whether or not there's any shortening or overlap, if the fracture is inside the joint or outside the joint, and then the presence of any rotation. Treatment of these finger fractures or phalangeal fractures primarily depends on the location in terms of if the fracture is inside the joint or outside of the joint and how much the bone is angulated or bent about that fracture line. For a lot of these fractures, 10 degrees is the amount of angulation that we can tolerate, and so we're talking about the angle between those two ends of the fracture. Also, depending on how much the bones have overlapped, that can influence whether or not surgery is needed. Usually around two millimeters or so of shortening or overlap suggests we might need surgery. And then the third thing is just the rotation. So if the bone is basically rotated in a way to where whenever you try to make a fist, the finger sort of goes where it's not supposed to. Any rotation is typically not tolerated within these fractures and will suggest the need for surgery. And finally, if it's inside the joint. So if enough of the joint is involved, usually 20 to 30%, kind of depending on what you read or who you talk to, that could be a sign that you might need surgery as well because the more that joint that's involved, the less likely you are to get good motion and have a good outcome. So angulation, shortening, inside the joint or outside the joint, and the presence of any rotation are the factors that are gonna influence whether or not a fracture like this needs surgery. If those things aren't present, then you can just buddy tape, mean tape those two fingers together for a few weeks and then do some aggressive early range of motion and get somebody back to pitching. 
obviously those fourth and fifth digits are a lot of where our grip strength comes in. So with Sale, depending on what type of pitch he's throwing, he may or may not be having to use those fingers for grip. So part of his recovery here might be influenced by just what pitches he's throwing, depending on how he's gripping the ball and how exactly he's holding it. He really might not be putting too much force through that fifth finger. And also just looking at the skin contour doesn't tell us the full extent and so certainly x-rays here to look exactly where the fracture might be, see whether or not that joint is dislocated, which I really don't think it is just looking at the photos, and then of course making sure all the tendons, ligaments, etc. are still intact after an injury like this. That's it for the video everybody, let me know as always any questions or comments down below, and until next time we'll see you later.